statistics and expert in this field. Årets pris handlar om kvantmekanikens kraft. This year's prize is about the power of quantum mechanics. Kungliga vetenskapsakademin har idag på morgonen beslutat att utdela 2022 års Nobelpris i fysik i lika delar till Alain Aspé, Université Paris-Saclay och École Polytechnique Palaiso, Frankrike. Elion F. Clauser, J. F. Clauser and Associates, Walnut Creek, California, USA och till Anton Seilinger, Universitet Wien, Österrike. Det tilldelas priset för experiment med sammanflätande fotoner som påvisat brott mot Bell-olikheter och banat väg för kvantinformationsvetenskap. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has this morning decided to award the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics in equal share to Alain Aspé, Université Paris-Saclay, and École Polytechnique Palaiso, France. John F. Clauser, J. F. Clauser and Associates, Walnut Creek, California, USA, and to Anton Seilinger, University of Vienna, Austria. They received the prize for experiments with entangled photons, establishing the violation of Bell inequalities and pioneering quantum information science. Professor Olsson will now give us a short summary. Please. Thank you. So quantum information science is a vibrant and rapidly developing field. It has broad and potential implications in areas such as secure information transfer, quantum computing and sensing technology. Its origin can be traced to that on quantum, quantum mechanics. Its predictions have opened doors to another world, and it has also shaken the very foundations of how we interpret measurements. What today is considered logical, measurable and quantifiable was initially debated by Niels Bohr and Albert Einstein in philosophical terms. John Bell transformed the philosophical debate into science and provided testable predictions that launched experimental work. This year's Nobel Prize in Physics honors the groundbreaking work and science of the central figures, Alain Aspé, John Clauser and Anton Seilinger, who took up the challenges of Bell and tackled them in the laboratories. Professor Tosh Hans Hansson will present the details of the work. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Olsson, and I'll leave the word to Professor Tosh Hans Hansson for a more detailed presentation. Thank you, Eva, for the introduction. Um, Einstein, in a letter to a colleague, famously wrote, I'm convinced that he, and he meant God, does not play dice. And what did he mean with this? Quantum mechanics, the theory of atoms and light, had been immensely successful, but it was also very weird. For instance, Take the simplest atom, hydrogen. Just one electron moving around the proton. Quantum mechanics couldn't even tell you where the electron was, just the probability to find it somewhere. Einstein didn't like that. He thought that a good theory should give you precise predictions, just as Newton's theory tells you exactly where the moon is in its, earth, in its orbit around the Earth at every moment. Not everybody agreed. Here are two of the founding fathers of quantum mechanics, Niels Bohr and Edwin Schrödinger. 
they thought that quantum mechanics was okay as it was, didn't need anything more, you just have to accept the peculiarities. Uh, and this position was put very clearly in this paper written in 1935 by Erwin Schrödinger. Uh, it was an answer to a paper written earlier that year by Einstein, Boris Podolsky, and Nathan Rosen. And they had come up with the thought experiments, which they thought proved, demonstrated, that quantum mechanics couldn't be the full story. And now I will explain to you a modern version of that experiment. So here you see a source. This source emits pairs of particles, entangled pairs, bell pairs. We'll come back to that concept. And they reach Alice and Bob, who makes measurement. They measure a property of these particles that is called spin. And in quantum mechanics, this spin can only take two values, plus or minus. So what happens when you do it many times? Alice will see a sequence of pluses and minus, plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, etc. It looks completely random. And the same is true for Bob. But the strange thing is that when they compare the measurements, every time Alice sees a plus, Bob will see a minus, and vice versa. And that's very strange, because they are far away from each other, and these particles look exactly the same. Uh, so, well, perhaps, let's look at it. Here we have the quantum cards. They look all the same, huh? We shuffle them or entangle them, and then here they go. And they can answer questions on sign. What sign do you have? Plus? What sign do you have? Minus. Okay. Let's take another set of quantum cards. Here they go. What sign? Plus? What sign? Minus. Hmm, strange. They look the same. How could they know what sign they have? Well, you see, here it is a trick. That is the following thing. Look, that was a minus. And that was a plus. So each entangled pair had one plus and one minus. I Oh, where the minus went there or there, but it was always one plus and one minus. So, could it be that quantum mechanics was the same? Could it be that there were hidden informations like on the cards? Could it be that nature was a trickster? Okay, just like I was before. Perhaps quantum mechanics is not complete. Perhaps there is something hidden. Einstein would have liked that. Uh, and it's a very natural way to think that it would be like that. But years went on, decades went on. No one found such a theory that could explain the experiments with such hidden variables. So this became something more of a philosophical question. Most physicists didn't care very much. Uh, 